Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so um, let's think about the Lakers. I made a Laker video this morning. I encourage everybody to check that out if you haven't already. Thank you guys for always supporting me. Uh, I saw something online that I know I echoed to you all, and and that was that I don't think it's overly important that we have a coach before the draft and I explained to you guys my entire way of thinking in a nutshell that's not how I think it should go I think in nearly every situation you most definitely want to coach before selecting a player in the draft but I also feel that in the Lakers specific situation that for which is urgent can make it so that the coach that they would be otherwise hiring could either be rushed into the position without them fully vetting him just to say they have a coach or have his leverage, maybe, you know, giving him a lot more leverage in his negotiations, um, given the fact that he understands that you have to hurry up and hire. So that's what the specifics of this situation led me to feel, that it is not overly imperative that the Lakers get a coach before the draft, being that the draft is literally two weeks away and we don't have a coach and the, the, the search is not going as well as we'd like. We were hoping to get Dan Hurley. It didn't work out. So under those circumstances, with that bit of time left, it's not as important that the Lakers hurry up and hire any old body so that they can have a coach in place because it's that necessary. I don't believe it is. But you would, in theory, in mostly all situations, want to have a coach in place for the draft. So that, I wanted to clarify that because I saw it and it was stated that the Lakers don't feel they need a coach before the draft. And it didn't have any context, no explanation following the statement of lining what, what the thinking would be. And then I looked in the comment section, and of course, they were killing the front office. And I just want to say that it's never my intention to suggest to the front office to do something that is not in its best interest. Nor is it my intention to suggest to the front office anything that I think would hurt them in the media. That's never my intention. I don't want you guys to take something. I say if you're listening to me, run off and tell the media without context or allow for them to take what you are thinking out of context without exposing the line of thinking and the explanation. Because I provided my line of thinking, which would make it make a lot more sense than me just saying, I don't think the Lakers need a coach before the draft and then proceeding to talk about something else. It has to be, people need to know why. And the why makes a hell of a lot of sense. But if you're gonna be anybody else in any other situation, I would not suggest you fire your coach before the draft or if you don't have a coach yet, it's not like it's not urgent that you find one or that it's not important that a coach be in place before selecting a player. None of those thoughts come with the alignment of what it is I was suggesting at all. I most definitely see the fruit in having your system in place and your coach in place before every draft. <laughs> it's just that when you're in this situation and you haven't had a chance to hire your coach or you haven't had success with the coach you wanted, and now it's the final minute, I think it's a lesser of two evils that you go into the draft without a coach rather than hiring somebody three times more than what they're worth to four times more than what you want to give them time you know, on the contract or hiring the wrong guy just to say you have a coach in place that's what i'm saying so i just want to make that extremely clear because i i worry i worry that maybe the front office is telling the media things that i honestly don't think are best to tell the media unless it comes with an explanation and while you may have given the explanation as we know the media will take things out of context to smear you because it's in their best interest to do that so i've been saying for a long time that i think the laker organization pays attention to me and these are the reasons why because i ain't heard no other soul in any walk of this situation say that they don't need a coach only person who said that is me and the only reason why i said that is because i don't want to see them hire the wrong person trying to hurry up and meet that magical media deadline uh, so that's 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 why i say this i, I say that um, and I hope I hope I'm understood when I say certain things that I don't think it would be in the Lakers' best interest to always 
reveal what they're thinking to the media or suggest what they're thinking to people who would otherwise leak things to the media, though a lot of times you don't know who's leaking what. But stuff like that is, is meant to be taken out of context so they can further bash you. And that's never what I would want for uh, the front office. So that's that's what I wanted to say, man. Um, also, I think um, I'm, I'm assessing the as we get closer to the draft, the situation with LeBron James possibility of him being drafted is, of course, as predicted, there's a lot of people who are going to try to say that they're going to draft Bronny James sooner. Now Philadelphia is one of the names that's going out. At the end of the day, they want us to waste our pick. Anybody who listens to me knows that I've already been, I've said this a million times. Those who hate us, which is a lot of the league and a lot of the media, those who benefit from seeing us make mistakes, want us to be stupid enough to make a bad decision. And when we have to properly define what a bad decision looks like, a bad decision could mean not drafting Bronny altogether and letting Bron walk to another team that does draft him. A bad decision could be taking him with the 17th overall pick. A bad decision could be taking him with the 55th pick. It's a lot of different things that can turn out bad for us. And I'm aware of all three of those things. I think that once you get into the second round, it becomes a, a, a nail-biting contest for us because at the end of the day, you don't know if someone's going to take him before you get a chance to. I think it's very safe to say that he's not supposed to be drafted based on what weeks, you know, his rankings. But I think it's also very safe to say that the idea that LeBron James could come with him could be a real thing um, for another team. So that's that's just the, what you have to weigh, man. These are the things that you have to weigh if you're in their seat. And I don't envy the Laker organization uh, for, for having a hard time with what to do in that situation. But what I don't want us to do is to waste the 17th overall pick on a prospect that's supposed to not even be drafted. That's always a mistake. Even in this situation, in my humble opinion. Now, if another team does it and Braun goes to that team, then I got then I got egg on my face. Because the one thing you definitely don't want to do is let LeBron James skedaddle to another team for all the reasons in the world, including that for which we really can't afford for that much value to dissipate into nothing. So, if you have to do something stupid to keep that from happening, then that's just what you got to do. But I'm telling you. I don't think another team is going to take him with a first-round pick. And I don't think it's a guarantee that LeBron James leaves us if they do. They could be the ones left with egg on their face when they lose their pick on his son and he resigns with the Lakers. And because that is in place, I don't think anybody's going to actually take that risk. I don't think so. I don't think anybody's going to actually take that risk. If LeBron James were in his 20s, which would make this nearly impossible, but you get the point, then if with a lot of years ahead for a, a prime LeBron James, yeah, you're going to definitely do something like this. But for him at 40 years old, I don't think the risk is worth it for other teams. But to try to force us into making a bad decision, I think it's worth bluffing about. All the way up to the final hour, it's worth bluffing about. But I don't think another team is very certain that LeBron James is going to not Resign with the Lakers just because Bronny's on their squad. I don't think another, if I was in another team's front office, my argument would be it's not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk. Um, as bad as we think he wants to play with his son, you don't know if he's trying to just simply get his son into the league by doing it this way. You don't want to get in a situation if you're another team where he does resign with the Lakers. And now you look as stupid as you do. That can get you fired. Especially if you got one of them lottery picks or something. And you waste a team's lottery. You Atlanta Hawks and you take them with the first overall pick and he don't go to Atlanta. Yeah, you getting fired. So that's that's why I don't think we need to really worry about that as much as people want us to think we do. I, I honestly don't. <laughs> now once you get to the second round, it's a whole other story. If the Lakers want to get a, a different second round pick on top of 55 just to make sure that they secure Bronny. I don't like it, but I understand the concern with LeBron James leaving. And if I'm if I'm in their seat, I can't promise you that I'm not going to be a little worried about that, you know what I mean? Uh, but in the first round, I just don't think... I can't see too many times where we're going to be happy we took a second-round prospect in the first round. 
especially a late second round prospect in the first round. I can't never see I can never see that being something I regret. If it costs me LeBron James, I'm not happy with that because that's too much value leaving my organization. But if you let a I'm gonna tell you like this, if you let a guy think he has that much leverage, it don't stop there in a lot of cases. <laughs> he's not gonna stop there. Put it like that. If you show him that you will take his son with the seventeenth overall pick when his son is supposed to go undrafted, he may go and turn around and ask for something else. He may turn around and ask you to give his son a fifty million dollar contract. <laughs> what's to stop him from like what's to stop him from doing something crazy like that? So we we got we got to stop we got to stop the bleeding somewhere as it pertains to letting people take advantage of us and letting people force us into bad decisions. Uh, you got to even if it costs you a lot. What you got to be able to see the signs of and the breadcrumbs of, so to speak, is this tumbling forward to you being on the hook for more and more and more and more. At some point in time, you just got to take the loss and read the universe's signs. When it comes to somebody who's willing to ask you to take, you know, ask you for seven miles when you're offering one mile, maybe it's just best to let that person go and eat whatever loss comes with it. Because you see down the road, they going to keep asking. When you show them you're willing to give them the world, they're going to ask for two planets. Believe that. So that's what I got to say about that. It's, it's going to be tough watching a superstar walk out of our organization, but it's going to be even tougher seeing a superstar hold us for ransom for the rest of this situation <laughs> any further than we've already been held. So that's, I think that's part of the problem right there. Um, so that, that needs to be said. You can't let people take advantage of you just because you're worried about what happens if they leave they probably need to be leaving if they're going to take advantage of it so that that's what i want to say to the organization there's a balance there you want to be respectful of lebron i don't think it's crazy if his son's available at 55 that you take him because it's only like three picks left what that means is the chances of somebody taking somebody you just have to have with the final two picks or in the draft well, it is two picks ain't it if we're 55 two of the picks are forfeited 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60 are forfeited. So it's like two or three more chances for someone to take somebody that you would ultimately have regretted leaving on the board. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Meaning that if you're scouting as thoroughly as I hope the Lakers are scouting, that's not that big of a risk because at the end of the day, who you're scouting, if they're still available, if they're still available at 55, you probably will be able to get them in the undrafted pool. You see what I'm saying? So I can definitely understand now that I'm studying the draft more and more and understand what's going on there. It's little to no risk taking Bronny at 55. It's little to no risk. It's only like a couple guys that I need to have in that second round. If with the homework that I've done. And they're gone by 55, unless they're just going undrafted. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's the that's what actually it is. That's what it actually is. The Lakers probably will take Bronny with the 55th pick if he's available. Uh, small risk, very small risk. Now that I've assessed it fully, so that's what I'm saying, man. I I, I don't. Love it. I do think that you can probably find, squeeze out a decent prospect at 55. Um, that probably will have more upside than Bronny. But, you know, you can probably get that prospect in the undrafted pool, too. If you don't take him, nobody else probably will anyway. So, now, <laughs> just because I said that, some prob somebody's probably going to take the guy I really, really want to draft at 57. But at, at that point, you just say, you know what, we had to do that for Bron. Uh, so that we could we could cover our bases because it is going to be really really disrespectful to him if we do not draft his son. He's gonna feel disappointed in us for not using that pick on his kid. And so whether he's right for that or not, it's not what I'm arguing. I'm just saying that's exactly how he's gonna feel. And so you probably don't do that. You probably don't do that. You probably take him with 55. Or 56. They call it 56, but I think it's actually 50, 55. I don't know. It's confusing. But whatever the case may be, that pick right there will go to Bronny um, to to save everybody headaches and, and all of this other stuff. So that's what I think is going to happen. Um, I don't know if you count Bronny as a point guard. 
You know what I mean? As in, you don't have to draft another point guard because you're getting one in the draft type thing. I doubt it. I look at Bronny as a prospect who's probably going to take a couple years to develop. We're only going to see him on the floor for long enough to get the applause from the arena <laughs> and see him in set, a set or two with his son, with his dad rather, and then off to the G League he goes, I'd imagine. It's not going to be a situation where he actually has a role on this team this year. It's not. That's not realistic in my opinion. Uh, but you never know. You never know. You get in the right coach. <laughs> Bronny, <laughs> Bronny might be starting. You bring that. You bring JJ in here. Who knows, man? But I just think for the betterment of of, of Bronny James, um, the likelihood that he's going to take a humble approach or a path rather uh, in the first year or two of his career is is pretty high, man. We didn't play Max Lewis last year at all. You know, Jalen Hutchinson spent plenty of time in the G League, so I would expect nothing less from Bronny James if we're serious about developing the kid. And look, I am. I am. I want to see him develop properly in the Laker uniform. I've been. I've said that from the beginning. I've never swayed from that. I want him on the Lakers. I just want the path for us getting him not to cost us so much. And with the 55th pick, it really ain't. Um, so that's that's just what it is. Uh, I think I, I'm thinking back to Scotty Pippen Jr. and I would have loved to have kept Scotty too as well. Uh, similar situation there, but I just think Scotty's going to be really good. He's already proven that he can play in the NBA uh, with the Memphis Grizzlies last year, and I just didn't agree with us letting that prospect go. I never did. I never agree with that. But uh, hopefully we can get it right with Bronny. And hopefully he can come in and have a good good career, man. So that's what I want to say, man. I know I've been on the record saying I don't want to take him in the second round, but when I looked at where our pick is relative to the end of the draft, and I start looking at the players that I like in the second round. Most of those guys should, in theory, be gone already. So, that's just what it is. Jamal Sheed is another guy that I want to tell y'all about, um, about from Houston, I believe it is. A uh, defensive guy with a lot of explosiveness. He can jump out of the gym. One of the most explosive two guards in the draft, if not the most explosive two guard in the draft. And he's a lockdown absolute lockdown defender so he's definitely somebody to have circled in that second round is another one of those uh gyms that i've been telling y'all about just like uh freeman um and several other guys that i've been kind of pointing out over the last couple of weeks uh i did some more homework on ron holland today uh that was the player i kind of circled to give more attention to and i'm much more aware of his defensive strengths i really like what i saw from him laterally I really like what I saw from him in the weak side blocking situational, you know, scenario stuff. He looked great in those situations. Um, he's very explosive as well. Definitely somebody who's going to put a hell of a lot of pressure on the rim and go downhill. I really like what I saw from Ron Holland from a plus side of things. I think the video that I saw that kind of gave me an opinion about Ron Holland pointed out many more of his weaknesses than this particular video did. I like how the person broke it down. Um what to expect from him i still see some herky jerky weird kind of balance to his movement can't get right probably a stumble over his feet type of movement it's i trust my instincts when it comes to this he is not the most coordinated athlete he's not and i understand people say that he is but my eye test tells me he's not and as much as i like what he brings to the table I just wonder if my instincts are correct about Ron Holland. I just feel like there's some can't get right there. Some bump, stumble over his feet type of stuff going on. He's still going to be a hell of a player. I think the Ger Gerald Wallace comp looks really good to me. You remember Gerald Wallace, super athlete, played for the Kings, played for the Bobcats. He's a really good player. I liked him a lot. That's who he reminds me of, uh, a young Gerald Wallace. Uh, the three-point shot is not great. It's a little uncoordinated, but I think it'll come with reps and, and good coaching uh, on that on that side of the ball. But his defense is, is definitely something to, to really be enamored with. Um, and his handle's pretty good, too. His handle. Ron Holland is a nice stop-and-go type of handle guy. Get you in midair and then take off with a dribble type, you know, stutter steps and... and uh, you know, I like, I like how he drives. I like his herky-jerky style of driving. 
Uh, he can drive left, can drive right. So I really like that aspect of his handle. Definitely somebody who's going to put a lot of pressure on the rim from a lot of different angles. So I really like I really like Lon Holland after watching the video today. I just trust my own instincts as to temper my expectations about his ceiling. Uh, even there's people who are saying he's the best player in the draft. I just see a herky-jerky, turn the ball over at the wrong time type of thing. I remember a guy by the name of Kwame Brown. And I, I love Kwame now, you know. I got a lot of respect for Kwame, the, the, the YouTuber. I think, I think he's come a long way. I think he was a good player at the end, too. When he played for Philly, when he played for Golden State, I thought he did some good things. So he turned into a good player. Um, but with us, he had a lot of self... Um, I'd say it was self... What do they call that when you... Uh, Self-consciousness. It was like, they're watching me, they're watching me, they're watching me. I can't get right because they're watching me. Type of stuff going on with Kwame Brown. He missed like eight layups in a row type stuff. I sense something like that with Holland. Something something is off. I don't know what it is, but something is slightly off. It may not be to Kwame's level when he was struggling with the Lakers, but it's something about how he moves around that just shows me like, yo, he a little off. He gon' he gonna stumble sometimes. When you think he's gonna have it together, he gonna stumble sometimes. I remember Robert Ory used to have that kind of issue too. I mean, Robert Ory step out of bounds for no reason type stuff. Just sometimes you're like, man, what the hell are you doing? It was a little bit of that here and there with Rob back in the day. As great as Bob was, you'd be look up. Sometimes he'd just do something like, oh, dang, Robert, where your head at, brother? <laughs> I just wonder if Ron Holland has that in him. I call it can't get right. That's what I call it. I don't know how else to put it. It's just like sometimes certain people just... They're just not going to be as balanced or as coordinated as the most of us. But all in all, I think Ron Holland's ceiling is pretty damn high. If he turns into what people think he's going to be, he's probably going to make an all-star team or two. They compare him to Cam Whitmore. Maybe by style of play, you can see some Cam Whitmore. But body type, nah. He don't look nothing like Cam Whitmore, in my opinion. But um, can probably be as dynamic driving at the rim and, and flying through the air. He's definitely an athlete. Um, that can do some fantastic dunks and stuff like that. So if Ron Holland's available at 17 or if they want to trade up to like 10 to get Ron Holland, I'll be thrilled. I don't want anything that I just said to make people think I don't want to take Ron Holland. I would love to see him in purple and gold. And I wouldn't leave him on the board at 17. Absolutely not. He's, he's the best player on the board at 17 for sure. So if people want to drop his stock, yeah, I think it'll be to their own detriment, especially in a draft like this where everybody got something wrong with him. There's not, there's not a player in this draft that don't have something wrong with him. So far, as far as I can tell, Ron Holland is a, is a lottery talent, and I hear the Lakers want to move up, and if they move up to get him, I'll be very, very happy. Very happy. So that's what I want to say. But as far as me ignoring what I'm worried about, I won't. And I hear everybody who loves Ron Holland. But I seen something. There's something there, man. <laughs> there's, I don't know what it is, but there's something there that ain't, ain't all that right. So... Uh, but at the end of the day, if he has good coaching and um, is given an opportunity to develop, he's a young player that I think is going to really help a team, especially on the defensive end and in transition. He's going to be a monster. He's going to be very difficult to deal with defensively. Uh, he's going to lock somebody up. Trust and believe that. And so I, I like that player a lot. And I hope I hope he lands on his feet wherever he goes. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to say, man. Just did a little homework on him. Also did some homework on um, uh, J-Dub's brother, uh, Williams, uh, from, from Colorado, uh, a buff, Colorado Buffs. I like him, too. Uh, the only critique I have for him is just he must get stronger. He is not ready at all. Um, it's not about whether his talent is there. It's just a lot of the things that he has to work on have to do with lower body strength. It's very simple. He needs to squat and squat a lot. <laughs> he, needs, he needs to get stronger, man. Push-ups and squats every day. And if they put him through a serious workout regimen over the next two years, then he'll probably be one of the best players in this draft. But a lot of what's wrong with him really looks like it has to all to do with strength. Because he doesn't, just like his brother, he don't have no real weaknesses to his game. He can, he can shoot, he can drive, he can pass, he can rebound, he can defend. He's an amazing base prospect meaning if you work on him you can turn him into something great if you, the player that you want to be at your wing spot he has all of those tools the only problem is he doesn't have any strength 
And so it shows when he bumps up against people, when he's running, trying to get his first step, all of that stuff is going to come from core strength, lower body strength. He's going to have to get those things under control. Once that happens, he could be as good as his brother. He could be as good as his brother. So I wouldn't hesitate to bring him in if I'm Utah or from Chicago. Hell, the Lakers, if he's available for us, for sure, take it. He shouldn't be available at 17, but if you move up and he's there, uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to pass on him. I'll take Holland over him, but not pretty much anybody else that's going to be in that 10, 11, 12 range. You definitely take that kid if he's available. Um, so, yeah, but but you understand he's not going to help you right away. You're going to have to put him through a workout regimen. you got to get a strength and conditioning coach to focus on him and turn him into what it is that ultimately will make him better because the only problems I saw with him in my opinion had to do with strength and conditioning everything else that I saw he's a good basketball player he's going to be very good all star level probably so that's what I wanted to say about uh, Williams man. I can't remember what his first name is for some reason but that's J-Dub's little brother definitely a nice young piece definitely somebody you want on every team in the league all teams every situation they fit all of them so yeah that's that's what i gotta say man this, this draft is better than people think this draft is better than people think and i'm higher on holland than i was before i saw that video and i would definitely take him um probably as early as eight san antonio holland and, and williams probably as early as depending on who needs him probably as early as five to be honest with you williams i'd probably take over holland because i think Williams has a little more balance to his game. Uh, Holland's a more of an athlete, probably a greater defender. Yeah, but I think Williams is a bit more balanced. Probably going to have more volume to his scoring, in my opinion. But, but well, Holland don't have no problems with strength. That's not, a, that's not a Holland issue, I can tell you that. He's just going to have to work on his overall coordination, in my opinion. Uh, the herky-jerkiness and all that, so... That's my assessment of both Williams and Holland, two guys that should be gone in the lottery, two guys who, if the league is drafting properly, will probably be gone before we get a chance to take them. Um, I understand that the Lakers have worked out Holland. I also understand that the Lakers, it's been rumored that they did, in fact, have the um, J.J. Redick interview today. I don't know how it went, um, and I haven't seen anything official on that, but I did hear that from some sources that I think are credible on Twitter and stuff like that so maybe they did sit down with JJ that's about as much as I can confirm maybe they did and I'm pretty sure they'll hire him when they get a chance to because I don't think I, I don't think they're going to go in a different direction other than JJ unless JJ turns us down so that's what I have to say man hope you guys enjoyed this video I appreciate everybody for continuing to support BDF 44 and I'm out